Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jan Peters. I'm a founder and CTO of InfraCore Company, so founder of FiberCore Europe. And it's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce you to our InfraCore technology. I'd like to start with this. What is the link between these pictures? You see scale-like structures, you see plate-like structures in nature with this bridges, log gates, heavy duty structures and infrastructure. The link between them, of course, is our InfraCore technology. And uh, that is a novel way to make robust uh, sandwich-like plates, which are extremely uh, damage resistant. Uh, we've developed this technology in order to be able to use uh, fiber reinforced uh, thermoplastic uh, thermoset materials in infrastructure. Um, but once we develop the techniques, we realize that it's much wider applicable. Uh, first of all, I'd like to explain a little bit what the technology is. Um, the basic concept behind it is that if you want to use fiber reinforced polymers in infrastructure, these materials must be robust. They must be damage tolerant. And of course, they should be price competitive. We're competing against concrete and steel, even wood. Um, to explain, first of all, I'd like to uh, set out a problem. Um, I once uh, designed my very first bridge as a classic sandwich structure, and I got a response from the Ministry of Transportation in Holland that it cannot be done. And there's a problem to be solved, and that is the skin core debonding problem and elimination. That's actually the Achilles heel of, uh, of FOP structure. So if you have a sandwich structure, this is known, you drop a hard object on it the core will crush, the skin is elastic, it will bounce back and you get a skin core debonding. Very hard to prevent that. Normally that's not much of a problem, but when you start running, rolling wheels uh, across a delimination like that, or debonding like that, you'll end up with a catastrophic failure in your bridge. So that's not acceptable as the backbone of a, uh, an infrastructure product which should last for a hundred years. Um, there are alternatives, of course, to make a beam plate-like structure. You can take some uh, protrusion panels or uh, beams next to each other, but when you hit them, you get a very high risk of debonding between the, the, the flanges and the web. So that is not a robust solution. We talked about the sandwich structure is not a robust solution. Alternative could be uh, a multi-box beam. So these are beams uh, fully wrapped and then bonded together. When you hit that, your fracture surface, which is unimpeded by fibers, will be in vertical direction, so your bridge can split. That is not a solution. Uh, you can combine a classic sandwich with a multi-beam, get, get a combination, but actually what you do, you combine two fracture modes. So that is not a solution. Uh, we have a solution in which uh, we made a, a box beam, a infracore box beam, in which you can get damage, but you will not be able to take away material from your bridge. So the load carrying capacity remains intact. To explain a little bit more, we'll just look at a, at a model bridge and we're going to look a little bit at the uh, beginning of a bridge, so this, this box, and look at the, the y direction, that's the span direction of the bridge. So assume that we will make a bridge uh, consisting of steel beams. So this is steel beams, we have two flanges, we have a web. We're going to play a little bit with the beam. This is still a beam, it's still two flanges and a web. And if we then reduce the thickness, we still have a steel beam, but it's a thin Z-shaped steel beam. Well, then we make a switch uh, as a thought model to a composite material. So assume that you were to make Z-shaped beams with a plus or minus 45 fiber direction going continuously from one part to the other. We can add some unidirectional fibers on the top and the lower flange in order to get some extra stiffness in span direction. The span direction is in Y direction. You can add some fibers in thickness direction to carry the wheel uh, load a little bit better. And then you can combine it. This is now, this is essentially what InfraCore is. So what you have is a multitude of Z-shaped beams, almost independent beams. But what happens if you hit a structure like this? So if we drop a weight on our structure, we are not independent for delamination. We can also get in the delamination. But this delamination is only a local debonding between two beams, which are essentially independent from one another. So it's, it's a local phenomenon. And if you then start 
uh, running wheels over it, what you will see is that because those two beams next to each other do not exchange much shear load, uh, the elimination between them stays uh, stable. It doesn't grow. And that is the essence of what we do. So we do not get a skin core debonding because the connection to the core remains intact, even if you damage the interface a little bit here by, a, by an indentation. The interface essentially stays intact. You cannot take away material from the top and you have no damage growth. Well, there are some options we have. You have a, in the core, we could put a foam block. The foam does not have a structural load function. You can add some cross uh, webs in order to improve the shear load in cross direction. And you see some other variants, even the massive blocks. We use this solid blocks of FRP in locations where you have to reduce by uh, local loads, for instance, bolted joints and something like that. Well, what does it look like in reality? This is a photograph on an actual InfraCore bridge deck. Uh, it's a tiny deck, it's a 50 centimeters, 50 millimeters roughly. Um, but what I've sketched here is that this dimension, so the depth of the structure can be 50, between 50 and one and a half meters. So we talk about serious depth of the sandwich structure. Uh, the thickness of the skins here is something like 12 millimeters. We can choose somewhere between reasonably one millimeters and 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters. And the core block, so the width of the blocks here is typically between 50 millimeters and 250 millimeters. If you look closely, you can see the Z layers here. Oh, the Z layers running here, jump to the other side and they continue here. And if you look at the, uh, the scale, you would see that the fibers which are here in the under layer, they will start up a little bit and they end up in the top skin, something like 50 centimeters to the right. And this layer will end up in the skin somewhere 50 centimeters to the left. Well, that is how it looks like. Well, what is the strength of the, of the technology? Uh, we managed to combine the good properties of sandwich structures and multi beams without the drawbacks. That's essentially what we have. We have a, a structure that is less vulnerable and it is cost competitive directly. Um, and that makes this technology the technology of choice for robust heavy duty applications like bridges and lock gates. What is interesting, this is a little bit of a sidestep, is that actually if you look at the skin of InfraCore itself, that is a new category of materials. So we actually invented a new material. We call that oblique layered materials. And then if you start looking around you, you see that there's a lot of parallels in nature. And in nature, we call them oblique layered structures. And that's now we're back at our first buy. Now you know, for your first sheet, you know what the, what the link is between them. So these are all oblique layered structures in nature. And you can find it everywhere in nature. In an artichoke, even in a not illustrated tail of a lobster, even in the flesh of a salmon. So it's, it's, only, uh, it's, it's everywhere. And actually, if you look at what, what do we do? If you assume that we take a pangolin, uh, which is flexible, it has its scales, its, its, its plates for flexibility in order to grow. In our case, what we would do, we would add polyester, uh, dip the pangolin in the polyester, and then we let it cure, and then we have an infocore pangolin. That's the idea. So it's a solidified plate-like structure. And if you were to break open the, the connection by delamination, for instance, you still have the consistency of, the, you know, of the, uh, the base structure itself. So that is the damage robustness which we built into the structure. And what is a nice concept is actually evolution came up after three and a half billion years with oblique layered structure. So the basic concept should be okay. That's what we're using. This is what it looks like, oblique layered materials in paper models. That's the skin. And there are two variants of the technology. There's a Z variant of the technology. And you can make your webs in a truss-like structure or straight or in a U-shaped variant. Once again, straight or trusses. And this obliqueness layer, that is something you will find in the skins of all our materials. We even adapted the classical laminate theory for that because the classical laminate theory does not uh, uh, have, have no, has no uh, facility to uh, account for out of the plane tilt of the layers. So together with uh, a student, we developed uh, an extension on the classical laminate theory to incorporate that. The technology is patented. We have 160 patents in 10 families and licenses are available. The technology uh, covers, let's say, the, the way of folding the fabric, but also the molding technology, the injection technology, the applications.
So how and where to use the technology? How, what we would like to do, we would like to see that we develop together with you new product market combinations. And once we see an, a sensible application, we will help you to develop your InfoCore application. And there are the license options are then that you could apply for a pre-license just to assess the technology, play with it, get a feel if it works for your application. If so, you can switch to a development application to go a step further and you end up with a production license. There are two variants. We could still engineer and pre-produce the parts of the, the final composition and the injection is done by you somewhere in the world. Or you take a full license where you have the whole spectrum from engineering up to production and installation. So the sector, sectors we are uh, servicing today are these infrastructure mainly, uh, also marine, very uh, uh, upcoming, new energy, and here, of course, whatever you might think of. And these are the un unique selling points, cost competitive, robust, steel hybrid uh, combination joints. are. Well, just to end up with some uh, examples, these are uh, small scale bridges. We developed something like 1200 bridges already locates very, uh, nice uh, shapes. This is the first 60 ton traffic bridge in, in Holland. So the whole plate, that thickness of roughly 90 millimeters, that, uh, sorry, 90 centimeters, that is one full injection of infocores. So we like to in, uh, inject big structures in single shots. Uh, 142 meter bridge deck. On the floor level, there is no steel steel connection. There's only an infocore deck. And this is a very lightweight structure across a highway in Holland. This is a typical bridge deck. Once again, a single injection, and the thickness is the full thickness is, a, is a, an infocore structure. Another one, even bigger, this is one of the biggest injections we did. This is 21 tons of polyester resin injected in a single shot. And in this case, this bridge carries 60 ton traffic load on a line support here, a line support this. The steel is only for the movement of the bridge itself. Even bigger, over the diagonal, 29 meters, another bridge deck, 60 ton traffic. Lock gates, well, you see these are big lock gates, actually the biggest lock gates at the moment in the world. Look at the people down there, this is a very big door, 13 meters high. Here you can see the map of operation, so the, the water level here is something like eight, eight, eight meters, eight, nine meters, which has to be contained. Fenders are being developed, and this is not a development where we make uh, U-shape U-infracore airfoil. So this is that sketch. This is the first uh, extension, and this is the first prototype. And we're trying to develop it right now for this airborne wind energy system, where the mid mid section of the wing is now being developed as a U-shaped infracore section. Uh, within the process project of Ramses for Becker Marine Systems, we developed uh, a, a rudder flap. This is a ship rudder of a very big uh, 18,000 ton container ship. Um, you see here that the, the, uh, a rudder flap like that, look at the, the, um, the guy, that is, that is a serious structure. It is roughly the size of the lock gates we, we saw in the previous slide. And we made a scaled down version for it. Uh, one in six using the infocore technology. You can see here we use the horizontal webs in the, in the sections here, vertical webs in that section, massive parts or solid parts in there. And this is also a full solid part. All once again injected in one shot. And it has been tested, proof tested, and it proved uh, sufficiently strong and more, and more than enough. Uh, approval in principle is, uh, is pending for this application. Uh, within the same project for Ramses, for Meyer Werf, Werf we have been looking at uh, interior interior paneling. These are the panels which would define uh, a cabin. And we've done the fire testing, and we now have an FRD 60 bulkhead fire classification on infracore. But what is interesting, when you expose infracore to fire, you can burn away the resin because the fabrics are still nicely woven through the core you do not lose your fabrics. The fabrics will stay in place. So you will always retain some residual strength even after exposure to fire. Uh, within Ramses, we developed uh, parts uh, technologies for an 85 meter ship. And uh, that has been done mostly with Daman, Daman shipyards in the Netherlands. Uh, 
that the Ramses project has this, a few stages. You begin at laminate level, you study joints, a test box, and finally a full scale demonstrator. I'll briefly show something of it. So this is the, the cross section of the ship and we've been focusing on developing these joints. And these are joints, uh, infracord joints to, uh, in this case, a classic uh, sandwich laminate. And as you can see, we developed flexible joints with which we can absorb some bending stiffness. These are some designs. And this is the classical trajectory which you run through from concept to cut models to finite element uh, model and up to the final uh, testing which we did. And we certified these tests, or these, these joints, with a safety factor between six and eight. One step up, the use of the actual joints, so the joints which have been developed are used in this application, which is a full-scale model of a ship. Um, so the laminate, the deck thickness is realistic, the side panels represent the hull. These are realistic, the joints are scale one-to-one. -one. Uh, the bulkheads are scale one-to-one. -one. What you see here is a four-point four point load test where we try to break the ship. So this is simulation of hogging and sagging, sagging uh, deformations. And the test has resulted in an 800 ton uh, load, which was carried by this, uh, by this uh, sample, which is an extreme load. And in this little uh, references, you can look at the films which are uh, associated with that. Then uh, within the same project, we had to prove that we can indeed inject, uh, for instance, a hole in a single uh, shot injection. And this is the first test for a vertical injection, six meter high. We were successful in filling that. And once again, we did that live during uh, a project uh, demonstration event, uh, a live demonstration of an actual injection of, a, of an infracore skin. And what you can see here is the typical injection. You see that we fill the laminate in thickness direction with injection points. And knowing that this works, uh, a six meter high injection tells us that we can inject an 85 meter uh, ship in a single shot. We know how long it will take. We know that the injection will work. And this is the demonstrator which was built. So the hull section, the, the decks were developed by us. And on this demonstrator, there was an impulse test, so an impact test on the both the, the top deck and the hull uh, section. And we also did a fire test on the top deck and we succeeded with flying colors. One of the more recent developments is the development of inland ships. So these are long ships, 60, 76 meters, 110 meters. They've been developed on paper and they, the developments show that we can uh, get substantial weight reductions for this inland shipping, which will uh, allow this kind of ship to reach higher up the river or carry more loads. This is a very interesting development. And then, uh, uh, finally, an offshore application, just a sketch. Uh, there's a lot of offshore wind, tur uh, wind uh, turbines, which all have a service platform like that in steel. And if you have a little scratch there, you have to send a ship to repair the damage before you get corrosion. Uh, the concept of an infracore panel or service deck could be that you have a, a, a maintenance-free structure, which you, you build it uh, once and you, you use it afterward without uh, any service needed. Okay, so that's uh, an overview where we stand. So I showed you some applications from the infrastructure from marine, from new energy. We have applications in the other applications. There's no time to 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 for the discuss. We would be very interested to hear what you what your ideas are, where you could use this technology. Once again, how could we do that? Finally, our objective is to uh, work it towards a license with you. That is what I would like to tell you.